1963, Porsche introduced the 911 with its teardrop shape at the Frankfurt Motor Show. The beauty of its design lay in its simplicity. Through the years, it developed some lumps and bumps and hoops and scoops for performance and technological reasons. But now, 50 years later, it has come back to a complete, pure teardrop shape. And the beauty of this new car is not just skin deep, it's throughout the entire vehicle. So let's take a look at some cool stuff. Lately, we've been noticing a trend, especially in high-end cars, for bigger and bigger brakes. Now, while the brakes on this car are not tremendously big, this is not a tremendously big automobile. In fact, it's a small automobile, and these brakes are more than adequate. They have a 13-inch cross-drilled and vented rotor with a four-piston Brembo caliper. It is interesting to note here that most cars that have Brembo calipers have the Brembo name splattered all over the outside edge so you can see it. But the Porsche has the Brembo name in real small letters at the bottom of the caliper, where you really can't see it, and they have the Porsche name in big letters on the outside. This system is the pre-filled system that Porsche adopted in 2009, and it allows the piston cavity to be pre-filled with a certain amount of brake fluid that pushes the brake pads closer to the rotors prior to stepping on the brakes, and that reduces the car's reaction time to your reaction time in stepping on the brakes. In the mid-90s, Porsche went from a semi-trailing link rear suspension to a multi-link rear suspension, and this is the latest derivation of that system. We've had some very expensive cars in here with some incredible suspension hardware and linkage, and this car takes a back seat to none. This is the links here. They are die cast aluminum, uh, beautifully made without a blemish, and they mount to a fantastically engineered, designed, and executed multi part subframe. The pictures that you're seeing don't really do this justice. You really need to uh, go buy one of, no, no, let somebody else buy the car. You steal the car, take it home and dismantle it, and you invite your friends in to look at the pieces. Yeah, your wives will love it. You tell them you're throwing a piece party. On this show, you hear us talking about engineering forethought and engineering afterthought quite a bit. Well, let me show you something here. They needed a way to mount this brake line to keep it from getting hurt, injured, bent, broken, what have you. And so rather than just drilling a hole in the chassis and putting in a screw or a retaining clip to hold it in place, they actually built into the mold the mounting perch for that little bracket that holds that brake line in place. And then they drilled and tapped it and held it there with a threaded machine screw. That is engineering forethought. And I can look around here and, and see examples of that all day long. But what I don't see is engineering afterthought. Underneath the car, you see these flat aerodynamic panels, just like you see under most cars these days. The car looks flat because the car is flat. These panels are just affixed to the bottom. Unlike on most cars, they're actually covering up drive shafts and you name it. And it's about as flat as we've seen. You've all heard the story of the bumblebee. Technically speaking, the bumblebee isn't supposed to be able to fly, but fly they do, and in fact, they fly very well. These cars are like bumblebees. The engines are located behind the center point of the rear axle, and because of that, there's an out of balance weight distribution problem with the car. And the factory has been fighting this since they first started building 911s, and this year, they made a giant step forward by moving the engine forward three inches. The previous model had a weight distribution of 38% up front at 62% in the back. This year's model has a weight distribution of 42% up front and 58% in the back. Now, to put this in perspective, there's an engineering law called the law of motion. And the law of motion says that for every inch pound of weight you have behind the rear axle, when cornering at speed, that inch pound becomes a foot pound. So basically, 
the weight of the engine when cornering at speed multiplies itself by 12. Now let's just arbitrarily say this engine weighs 600 pounds and you're going down a road 80 miles an hour and there's a left-hand sweeper coming up. You enter that turn and this engine wants to go straight. Now the time you get to the center of the apex of that turn at 80 miles an hour, this 600 pound engine now weighs thousands of pounds and it's trying to pull the car off the road back end first. Now steering geometry, suspension, everything, tire adhesion, your driving ability all comes into play. So like the bumblebee, they shouldn't do what they do, but they do do what they do and they do it very well. This particular car comes with the first ever seven speed manual transmission put in an automobile, but that's not the only cool thing. It also has rev matching downshifts, which theoretically should make the synchronizers and hence the whole transmission last longer. Now you may have watched our episode where Hurley Haywood tried to teach Motorman how to downshift using the heel toe method. Well, Hurley could have saved himself a whole lot of aggravation if he'd have just given Motorman one of these cars.